Today's passage is taken from Exodus chapter 34, verse 14. In Exodus chapter 34, verse 14, it says, But thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. The Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. What a wonderful text it is. Now, based on this passage, I would like to talk about the jealous God. The term jealousy is often used from romantic perspective. And the dictionary defines the term jealousy as a, a feeling unhappy or angry because somebody who you love or you like shows interest in somebody else. That is what the Oxford Dictionary defines. Let me repeat once again. Feeling angry or unhappy because someone whom you love or like shows interest in somebody else. That is the first part of this definition. And the, the second part of this definition is that wanting or having a desire to keep or protect somebody or something which you have because you feel proud in doing it. That is what this, the, the dictionary defines. Now, let us return back to what our passage says. The Bible says that our God is a jealous God. That's the reason behind it. How comes that the God who has everything, whatever he needs on earth, in the universe, the God who is a perfect God, the God who is the righteous God, is still having a jealousy upon someone else because of some reason. There's a reason behind it. Because he has a relationship with somebody. And that somebody is his children and his wife. In the Old Testament, on the basis of this passage, Yahweh is metaphorically considered as the husband and Israelites, the children of the people of Israel, are considered as the wife of Yahweh. So metaphorically, they were husband and wife. And when the wife ran after other gods, the idols of the Canaanites, the Moabites, and other people, the pagan nations, he felt jealous about that. He felt jealous. He was unhappy. He was upset. He felt angry. And he, he tried to protect them and call them back and bring them back into the right relationship which they have been doing before. How about the New Testament? In the New Testament, the scripture says that Christ chose us. It's not we that chose him, but Christ chose us first. And in the call of Christ, we agree to become a believer. We give our heart. We have faith in him. And we believe in him. And we agree to become his people. And the, the New Testament says that we are pride of Jesus Christ. We have been betrothed to Christ and we, and we are waiting for his return. That one day we will have a marriage supper. That is the, the relationship that we have. Because of our consent, because of the word that we say, yes, I do, in the marriage vow between Christ and church. Because of what we agree to do in relationship pertaining to Jesus Christ, he has every right to feel jealous. And now, as we become his people, as we become the co heir of Christ, as we become a royal in connection with Jesus Christ, he has every right to feel jealous. He has every right to get angry. He has every right to feel upset when we feel, when we give our attention to other things aside from Christ. God says that he chose us not because we are the strongest. God says that he chose us not because we are the highest in number. But God says that he chose us because we are the most feeble people in the world. He chose us because we are the most foolish people in the world. He chose us because we are the most weakest people in the world. 
And yet he chose us in order to put the, the vices of this, the, these people of this world to a shame. Today, if we remember and think about the situation and the context where we are living, it clearly shows that many people in the world today has already gone after the things of the world, including Christians. And that makes the God to shed tears. That makes our God to keep restless. So many of God's children today are giving their attention to, to alcohol. So many of our people today are giving attention to having sexual relationship, extramarital sexual relationship with other people. So many so-called believer Christians are, are after businesses. So many people, Christ, so-called Christ people are after money. And that is considered as the idol of the present day. The Bible says that we have to be careful of the idols. In the Old Testament time, in those days, the idols are considered to be a kind of an image made or engraved by the hand of the people of this world. But today, that is not the condition. The today's, today's definition of idol is much, much broader than that. Let me tell you something which is very important. If we are giving our mind or we are keeping our mind above God, if we are giving our attention to something else more than God, then that is definitely your idol. There are so many people who have compromised their life, their morality, because of their relationship with their boyfriends and their girlfriends. There are so many people who have compromised their morality and ethic because of their love of money, because of the lust of flesh. Because of the lust of their eyes. Because just in order to satisfy their desire, their fleshly desire, they forget what the Lord says and they run after what they see in their life and what they feel in their life and what they desire in their heart. Therefore, God is having a jealous upon us. God is having a desire to bring us back into right relationship. Just like how we were at the beginning part of our Christian life. God will not have re uh, jealousy because of some, somebody who is not a believer committing sin. Of course, God will have, God will show his love in order to save that kind of man. But God will definitely have a jealousy when his people, his children, a believer, a church, run after the things of the world. The Bible says, God shows his love in that when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us. God gave his only begotten son just in order to save us. Because he, because of that, he has every right to feel jealousy. When we feel, when we are astray from the right relationship with the Lord. Our God is immutable God. Our God's truthfulness, our God's veracity is unchangeable. He loved us before. He is loving us and he will be loving us even in the coming days. Therefore, let us not compromise our faith with the things of the world. Let us not make our God to be a jealous God, but let us make our God to be a proud God. 